you go, but uh, I will never cater to a mob. And uh, that's it. End of story. Uh, Eliza Blue is not important. She's not important to me. She's not a member of Congress. She doesn't enact policy. She is a, a low tier internet personality that for some reason people are desperately obsessed with. And I literally don't care. So uh, have a nice day. Tim Pool finally addresses the Eliza Blue drama. Tells us why he blocked the quartering on Twitter. And as a bonus, we find out more details about the falling out between him and Jack Murphy. And we're going to talk about it. I'm your host, Hyde. This is Hide and Seek Media. Hello, all you beautiful and amazing people. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to the show. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, so you get notified anytime I drop a new video. The show is brought to you by the Hide and Seek Media store. If you're like me and you like to spark a conversation or make a statement without having to say too much, click the link down below. Check out all that cool merch I have to offer. And if you use code 1776, I'll give you 20% off your entire order. So, Shane Cashman, a writer for TimCast.com, has done a story on Eliza Blue, and it's been posted to TimCast.com for everybody to read. But the problem is it's part one of we don't know how many parts. So I have this story pulled up, right? And I'm not going to read this story because it is very, very long, and it is unnecessarily wordy. So... Shane Cashman comes off as the writer who likes to inject a lot of nonsense into his stories to make them longer. A lot of stuff that doesn't need to be in there. Um, and probably two-thirds of this you don't even need to really read if you want to know what's going on with Eliza Blue and her story. Because most of this is just um, empty words used to fill a page. And you know, create a narrative in your mind. This also isn't a very hard hitting piece. You can tell that Cashman has an affinity for Eliza Blue and doesn't want to cast her in any negative light. So he does his very best in this part one to avoid any negative connotations directly towards Eliza Blue. And even though he does acknowledge that there is a possibility she could be lying about her story, he doesn't actually say that or go into go in on some of those questions to find the truth. He accepts he accepts her answers at face value and moves on with the questioning throughout the story. So in part two or three or however many more parts there is, there better be some hard hitting journalism coming out of this or at the very least, Shane Cashman is going to lose a lot of respect in the Tim Cast world. Because trust you, me, when I tell you that as a fan of Tim Cast, as a subscriber to Tim Cast, and as somebody who has been watching Tim for seven years now, I'll, I would be disappointed if this story does not get to the bottom of the truth. Whether it hurts Eliza or helps Eliza. But I don't think we're going to get there. I think Shane is going to basically write a giant fluff piece to help Eliza Blue's career. And that's one of the things that Tim addressed in the Super Chat portion of last night's episode with John Rich. Um, he was reading a couple of super chats and people were telling him that they were unsubscribing from his webpage and, and, you know, unsubscribing from his YouTube channels and everything because they were just disappointed in how Tim handled this situation and handled this story. I also, I put up a poll and I said, smash the like button if you don't trust Eliza Blue. And 89% said, I will like because I don't trust her. That means everybody who smashed the thumbs down trusts Eliza Blue. All right. Well, that was an interesting, uh, it's 13,000 votes. It's interesting to see that so many people came here to uh, uh, support her by giving us a thumbs down. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm, I can't say I'm surprised. A lot of people do support. Scrotes McGoat says, last night as a member, if Tim doesn't disavow Eliza tonight, get the f 
outscroats McGoat. You can cancel right now and see you later. You will never wave money in my face and make me disavow anybody, especially someone I care so little about, Eliza Blue. She's been on the show two times. If you're going to cancel because I won't do what you say, you shouldn't have been here in the first place. Bye bye Don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. And I got to be honest, I could care less how Tim handled this story because the only reason why I'm talking about it is because everybody else is talking about it. And because every single recommendation on my channel right now is about Eliza Blue and Tim Pool. So I don't like talking about other creators. I don't like getting into the internet drama like Tim does. I'm on that side with Tim. I don't like to dive into the internet drama. I, I'm here to talk about the news, the culture, and what's going on in, in this country and what we can do to, to fix it and save it. Not some infighting or some stupid little fight between creators. I, I really could care less about what other creators do in the general sense. That's why I don't do videos on them too much. I have done some videos on Tim, but that's because what I'm trying to build here is what Tim has already built in West Virginia. And I'm trying to create that same environment, that same mentality, that same institution here in Oklahoma on, on my own. You know, you got TimCast.com. I'm trying to build HideAndSeekMedia.com. So I understand where Tim is coming from when he says he doesn't want to get into all this drama. And believe you, me, I would love to have thousands of subscribers and and you know all of that on my channel and i could get that if i sit here and did what the quartering did and just start talking about internet drama all the time and talking about people more than i talk about the news i'm gonna i'm gonna say this right now to each and every one of you as a member if you really care about jack murphy you you shouldn't be a member of this website i don't care you, you know, and, and the other thing they're doing, right, is they're saying that, like, so I did a video today talking about how the one thing that really makes me want to just quit is the low tier internet drama. Like, I specifically cited the Young Turks and Hassan Piker, mm -hmm. and now they're claiming I was talking about Jeremy. And I'm like, it's because all they have is fake drama because, I, I don't know, that's, it's, it's not real. Right? And... I don't want to do that. That's not my style. That's not what I'm trying to build here. And that's definitely not what I want my channel to be known for. I want my channel to be known for insightful, common sense, logic, and reasoning when it comes to the news and what's going on in the country and in the world. So that's what I'm trying to build here. Tim's the reason why I'm trying to build this here. Um, so all those people going after Tim for not being, you know, not going after this story hard and not um, addressing this. You are the ones who care about this story. You have to understand that. You cannot project your feelings about this story onto Tim. He doesn't care. I don't care. As somebody who's been following Tim for years and been subscribing to, for Tim, to Tim's website since it launched, I don't care about Eliza Blue. I don't care what kind of scam she's pulled in the past. I don't care if she's grifting people. I really don't. None of that matters to me at all. I think, I oh, think I you know, just to lightly mention the Eliza Blue stuff, I think she's a grifter. Like, she says she wants to be famous. She clearly wants to be famous. Mm -hmm. And she's found that being an advocate against trafficking is a path towards being famous. So I'm kind of like... Look, man, she's not that famous. I don't really care that much. She's not going to change policy. She's not going to have a big impact. There's no reason to give people like this attention. But if she's advocating against child porn and human trafficking, it's like, okay, well, you know, whatever. Maybe she should get famous if she's pushing for that. What matters to me most is you have two creators here who are culturally relevant, and they're attacking each other over somebody who doesn't mean anything. Not going to change the world. She's not going to benefit anything else. So let's get to why Tim you know, what Tim said on TimCast IRL. Basically, Tim believes that Eliza Blue and all this hoopla around her is all done on purpose to make her famous. She has said that a number of times in videos and to Shane Cashman that her whole goal is to be famous. Two things are happening. 
One, a lot of it's inorganic promotion of Eliza Blue. A ton of content flooding the internet, bringing up a personality no one's ever heard of, makes her instantly famous to even the likes of, you know, nine-time Grammy nominee John Rich, who's not heard of her. Mm -hmm. That's the point. They want us to talk about her because they're being paid mm -hmm. to generate controversy. They either want to, that's why it doesn't matter if we say anything good or bad. Yeah. It if, we say, if we say, look, we're doing the story, Shane Cashman's, nope, nope, it's bad. Mm -hmm. We say, okay, we're not going to talk, oh, nope, now it's bad. I think it's a, it's a, it's a PR campaign in order, uh, I think people are being paid to promote, to promote her. Yeah. Keeps you in the cycle, basically. That's right. Everyone She's never been you. more famous because of right. this. Well, it seems like she's getting her wish. But the problem is, most people are going to blame Tim for Shane Cashman's story. And I want to put this out there right now. If you guys are subscribers and watch the Members Only podcast of the John Rich episode, you'll know that Tim told Shane... He didn't want him to do the episode. He didn't want him to do the story. They had already had an interview lined up with Andrew Tate, and Tim would have much rather have had that story than this Eliza Blue story. But Shane felt it. It was his duty to tell Eliza's story. So I'll be completely honest with the Shane Cashman story. I told Shane Cashman I didn't want him to do the story because he went from profiling Ye to Carrie Lake, and now to a low mid-tier internet personality over, over you know, that, that I just think the next, he, like, he was supposed to be interviewing Andrew Tate. We, we reached out to Tate. I, you know, I, as Shane mentioned, this may kill the story. And uh, Tate said yes. Mm. And so we were like, this is, this is great. Shane writes tremendous work. I said, I don't think he should do it because th clearly they're trying to, to promote Eliza Blue. That's what this whole thing is about. She's never been more famous. Yeah. And I just, I think it's beneath him. But he said, look, man, I, I really, really want to dig in and, and, and do the story. It's 80,000 words, it's massive. And I'm like, look, man, you do your thing. I'm not gonna tell you what you can or can't write. I, I trust you. At, at TimCast, we don't tell people they have to say something, they can't say things. If someone wants to post offensive, offensive memes on social media, I'm not gonna fire them over it. Shane comes to me and says, is the story I gotta tell? I say, you tell your, you do your thing. And he did it in 80,000 words, people. That's why this is part one. Now, I don't know how many words this was. It's pretty long. I mean, you can see. This is a pretty long story. It goes and goes. This is one of the longer stories I've ever seen on TimCast.com. I mean, look at how long this is. I mean, it's like two chapters in a book. It is long. Look at I'm still scrolling. Still scrolling. Now, if this is part one and Shane Cashman had this much to say about Eliza Blue and it doesn't even go into real big details about her story. Look at this. I'm still scrolling. Look at how long this story is. It's ridiculous how long that story is. Look at this. It's, it is ridiculous. Okay. And like I said, this is why I'm not going to read the entire thing because you can see as I'm scrolling. This story is long, and it's long because Shane Cashman put a lot of bullshit in this story that didn't need to be there. He, he goes on about um, how it's going to affect him and, and how he's going to navigate through all this, and I don't, you know what, that's for you to figure out, not to tell the reader. I don't care. Show me the results of whatever you figured out, because that's all I care about. I don't care about your path or your or your how you got there or the personal struggle that you had to go through to do this story. Because guess what, Shane? If you had a personal struggle you had to go through this story, that was your choice. Tim told you not to do the story. You chose to do it. So whatever comes from this is all on you. And I'm going to tell all of you people out there right now who watch my videos and are fans and subscribers to Tim Pool, do not hold Shane Cashman's story against Tim Pool. Tim told him he didn't want this story done. But Tim's also the kind of person who's not going to handcuff his writers, his journalists. I understand that. I respect that. But at the end of the day, it is still your publication. It is still your website. And at the end of the day, it is still your brand and your name on it, Tim. So you have to understand how people are going to take this. Now, if you don't care, I get that too. I understand you don't care and you're tired of it, 
but there needs to be a better way to address your viewers. Telling them to leave and don't let the door hit you on the ass on the way out, I don't think is such a smart idea. You can tell them they're more than welcome to leave. That's their choice. That's their prerogative. You didn't have to get nasty about it. And granted, you could have gotten a lot nastier. I, I agree. But at the same time, you still could have addressed this in a better way. For me, I have a problem with all of these other people going after Tim for not covering this story. Like I said, I could care less. But there has been that beef between Jeremy and the quartering and um, over all of this. And Tim gave us some insight into why he blocked Jeremy from the quartering on Twitter. And I don't know that I agree with it completely, but it's Tim's prerogative. He can handle it however he wants to. Um, apparently, he said that the quartering sent him some veil threats, and he wasn't he didn't like that. And, and and this is why all of his fans are mad. We booked him twice. He canceled on us twice. The second time he canceled on us at the exact last minute, and we didn't know, and we had, we had to find someone else. Fortunately, we had Matt Strickland on, and he was great. And then that night, he was supposed to be on. He went on a different show and criticized me for not talking about wow, it. Wow, dude. And then I'll, I'll let everybody who's a member know why I blocked him. Because he sent me a message at 2 in the morning, which came off as a veiled threat. I will try and quote it verbatim what he said. I know our audiences want a war, but I don't. Please tell me your guy is taking her to task. Wow. And I just said, I'm done with this. Um, then the quartering responds. Um, here's the messages that, that they were sent. And this is, Tim pretty much said this verbatim. It was pretty close to verbat verbatim on the show. But he said, even though our viewers want war, I don't. And first of all, I want to tell you, Jeremy, from the quartering, that I'm a viewer of both, and I don't want a war between you guys. He said, these people got to understand, <clears throat> I know our audiences want a war, but I don't. Please tell me your guy is taking her to task. It's, it's about as close to verbatim as I can get. My audience wants a war? My audience doesn't care about this e-girl e e stuff. If you're a true fan of the quartering and Tim Pool, you don't want a war between these two. You want them to bury the hatchet. Throw this whole Eliza Blue nonsense in the garbage and move on. If you're a fan of both Tim and Jeremy, do you want a war between them? Let me know in the comments down below because I sure don't. I don't think Tim did either, and I think that's why he blocked him, was to avoid that. But Tim says, hey, I don't take to veil threats, and if that's how you want to play these games, I'm not going to play them. I'll just block you and move on. And you can see from this tweet, or from this message that the quartering sent, even though our viewers don't want war, or even though our viewers want war, I don't, please tell me this dude took her to task. So, what happens if he doesn't? Or he didn't, obviously. So you can go and watch the quarterings videos about the story that Shane Cashman put out. He didn't take her to task. And as a result, Jeremy and a lot of other people are going in hard on Tim. And I got to say, it's a bad move. It's a bad move for you. Because you're going to look stupid in the end. Tim is pretty intelligent. And he's calculating. He's not going to do something like this without knowing what kind of repercussions are going to come from it. Now, he either doesn't care about the repercussions or he knows about them. And, and he knows what's going to happen enough to where he can plan to drop bombshells on all of you guys. I don't know. All I know is that this kind of fighting between creators is stupid. Especially creators on the same side. Jeremy from The Quartering and Tim Pool pretty much are on the same side of the culture war. So infighting between them is really stupid. And we shouldn't be doing it. Now, for me, the reason why I'm covering this story is because it's been popping up in my freaking recommendation feeds all over social media for the last two days. And after watching Tim basically explain why he didn't want to cover the Eliza Blue story... Because, because he believes it is an, uh, an op to make her famous. 
and that all of this is done on purpose. He gave us reasons why he blocked Jeremy on the quartering. And I got to say, I'm not a fan of blocking people. And that kind of hurts Tim's argument a little bit, in my opinion. But we did get a little nugget in all of this during the members podcast. And that was found out some more information about why Jack Murphy is no longer on TimCast. Beyond the normal reasons anyone would believe that Jack Murphy is no longer a part of TimCast or a recurring guest on TimCast, it's not because of his past. Tim said it's because of the way he handled the Sidney Watson and Elijah Schaefer interview. Murphy was on 17 out of 400 episodes. He was a mm-hmm. recurring guest that was here periodically. It was over the span of a few months. We had him every other Wednesday. That was it. Yeah. And I'll be honest, the reason why Jack Murphy doesn't come on the show anymore is because I personally felt the way he handled the situation with Eliza and Sydney was extremely inappropriate. Oh, you, yeah. You said Eliza and Sydney. Elijah? Elijah. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. It's yeah. happening. The confluence is beginning. <laughs> well, their name, actually, I was talking to someone, I mentioned Elijah Schaefer, and they were like, Eliza? And I'm like, no, no, no I can't escape it. I can't escape. The way, the way he handled that with Elijah and Sydney, <clears throat> like, I basically was talking to both of them, and I was like, guys, like, this is not worth the drama. Like, I get it. I, I told Jack, like, dude, you need to apologize. You shouldn't have said that to her. I get it. Just be like, I was wrong. I'm sorry, dude. I seriously, I hope you guys can forgive me. But behind the scenes jack was just like i don't know i guess his honor was her and that because he didn't apologize to sydney and own up to his mistake he doubled down tim said i'm not, i can't be a part of this and i'm out and just said you do your thing man i'm out and that's what happened and i think jack wanted to fight that fight because he believed tim was going to be behind him and he was going to have the support of TimCast.com and TimCast IRL to, you know, push his message. And he was sadly mistaken. And now we don't hear anything from Jack Murphy. Now, here's the thing, right? This could happen to anybody. It could happen to you. It could happen to me. It could happen to Jeremy in the quartering. It could happen to Tim. All of these things can happen to anybody. My problem with all of this is the fighting itself. Like we do not need creators who are fighting the culture war, fighting each other. And I've, I feel like this rift between the quartering and Tim is too big to be repaired. Now. I think Tim is pissed off to the point now where he doesn't want anything to do with Jeremy. And I doubt he'll even give Jeremy an opportunity to even come on Tim cast at all. Now Um, they tried to book him twice. He flaked twice the last time at the very last minute, so they had to scramble to get a guest. And that pisses Tim off, right? Because to to Tim, that's, you know, disrespectful. And I get that. It'd be disrespectful to me, too. So I completely understand where Tim is coming from. I'm on Tim's side on this, but I want to know where you guys land. Let me know. Do you think Jeremy was right? Do you think Tim was right? Let me know in the comments down below. But I'm going to leave it there. If you've made it all the way to the end of the video, I appreciate you guys watching. It really does mean a lot that you've made it this far. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified anytime I drop a new video. Smash that like button if you like the show and the content. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this video, the topic, and the channel. I love to engage with my viewers, so feel free to fire away. But if you want to help support the channel, the best thing you can do is to hit that share button and share this video on all social media platforms. Those interactions will show the algorithm that this video needs more impressions, and that's how we're going to grow. I appreciate everything you guys are doing, and I'll catch you later. Peace.